So this is St Helena Island. St Helena has an interesting history, starting with its name. In 1827, three years after Moreton Bay was first set up as a convict settlement, over in Dunwich, they, were, they set up a stores depot and they were having some uh, trouble with a local Aboriginal fella. Called. And this fella, he was apparently looked exactly like Napoleon, so they nicknamed him Napoleon, like Napoleon Bonaparte. And uh, they caught, ended up finding him stealing an axe and they decided that they would they would exile him to a then unnamed island, just like the real Napoleon had been exiled to St Helena Island only a few years before in 1815 after the book Battle of Waterloo. So they uh, bring him here and they drop him off and immediately they dubbed this place St Helena Island. They dropped him off but the only problem was three days later they found him back in Dunwich <laughs> running around and they couldn't work out what happened but it seems that apparently that when they dropped him off he was still clutching the stolen axe so the first thing he did was go to a nice tree and build himself a quick bark canoe Smart. and then uh, just paddled his way back home across the bay which is probably about 12 miles to to um over there is uh, Dunnage over there yeah, so he paddled back across the bay with his uh, with his new canoe he made with his nice stolen axe well that's that's how the story goes but a few years after that the uh, Morton Bay convict settlement commander Captain Logan he officially named it St Helena Island Between 1875 and 1880, the causeway was constructed to make fairing simpler. Not only were goods received from farm produce and workshop products were exported to Brisbane, tramways linked the causeway with the stockade, which is up there, the quarry and the sugar mill, horse drawn and manual rolling stock bridge. So, I used to get the... Okay, so what St Helena Island is most famous for is being the colony of Brisbane's prison between 1867 and 1932. It was said to be the best of its kind prison in the world, or the worst, depending on the perspective, I guess. Because it was basically self-sufficient. It was a farm. They grew sugarcane in the early days, but then they stopped growing that because they thought the prisoners would be able to hide in it. So they grew other crops, and they ended up with cows and everything here. Uh, the prison was referred to as the hellhole of the Pacific uh, because it was so bad. You know, they, they had little cells that were so small that you could only just fit a hammock in them. And they're trying to sleep in them, I mean, the mozzies from the mangrove swamps around here and the midges and everything would have been absolutely maddening. They weren't allowed to talk at the prison except for an hour after meal times. Now, apparently it was a horrible, horrible jail to be at. Some of the, you know, the, the punishments included uh, shot drill, the cat of nine tails, being locked up in little cells. They made, under, well, they dug holes in the ground made of concrete and they would put them down in there and just cover it up for up to a month in total pitch black darkness drive them insane. It's just horrible. Lots and lots of people died here. Um, there's, a there's two cemeteries actually. There's the prisoners one with, with the, where the graves are just marked with numbers and then there was there dozens of people tried to escape but the record here was actually better than Alcatraz. There was only one or possibly two escape attempts that got away. There was one a South Sea Islander guy that made it all the way to New Zealand and then he was eventually caught about two years later. But they used to have, uh, they used to feed the sharks all around the island. Um, to feed them offal scraps so that prisoners couldn't swim away. A lot's tried, but disappeared, probably eaten by sharks or whatever. Prison ruins up there. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to go up there because it's a cultural, it's a cultural site, so it's protected. And you know, if they let anybody go up there, they're just going to graffiti it and steal bits and pieces or whatever. That's just human nature. But uh, luckily, uh, we can cheat because we've got a flying camera. Um, and there's no law that says you can't fly above a national park. Not in Australia, anyway.
So this here is the um, is one of the quarries where they dug up that beach rock to use in the stone buildings up in the prison. Apparently it was kind of unique, this beach, beach rock, in that it was soft to dig up, but uh, when exposed to air it went hard quite rapidly, so it was, uh, it was easy to shape with picks and shovels or whatever into blocks, building blocks, and then it would harden off. It seems to have stood the test of time up there because there's quite a bit of it left standing. See how the uh, how the sea is slowly reclaiming this side of the island. That's the lime kiln that used to be way back. The sea used to be quite far back that way, but it's slowly coming in. They're trying to protect it with that uh, little rock wall there. This is the old lime kiln built in um, 1869, I think it was, a couple of years after the prison was open. St. Helena Island sits on top of a coral shelf, old coral. Um, and all that coral and, and shells, they used to burn in this kiln. Burn it to about, I think about 900 degrees Celsius or something like that. And all the ash would disappear out the top and what was left was uh, lime, which is what they made the concrete out of too in between all these bricks, in between all these rocks that have built the uh, structures here. I mean, most of the buildings up there were made of wood and they're not there anymore, but uh, the ones still standing were made from this beach rock. And uh, the cement was made with lime that they got from here. In the early days, the wardens um, were allowed to have their families here on the island. They had a little school up there and everything, but they started to have quite a few problems with the families here. So they decided to um, ban families being here. And then there was complaints about the wardens being too bored because they'd have to spend weeks over here at a time. So they looked for ways to, to try and amuse them. One thing they did in 1927 was to build this as a swimming enclosure for the wardens. And the only problem was that in the first probably a couple of weeks after it was built, one of the wardens dived in head first, not realising how shallow it was, and broke his neck and died. Oh, yeah. So that probably didn't go too well. Mm Thank <laughs> you. 